Maya doesn't have a lot of modeling hotkeys, but it can still benefit from them. So I just want to go over some of the hotkeys that I use. And these are personal hotkeys. So if you press the same key combinations, nothing's going to happen unless you go to the description and download my hotkeys. So my first hotkey is Shift R and it just moves the object so it sits on top of a grid. And it works on multiple objects as well. So if I have something like this, I can just select all of them, press Shift R, and they're all gonna sit at ground level. I wouldn't use this for really dense meshes though because it's just really slow. Next we have the fast bevel and it works just like the normal bevel, but it's a little faster. <laughs> so I just select an edge and press S and all I have to do is click and drag on the screen to change the offset. And if I hold down shift, I can add segments. So it does, it works exactly like the normal bevel, but again, it's just a little bit faster. And if you do want to access the functions that you get with the normal bevel, then just go into object mode and press T and you'll see that you still have all of the same functionality. So your mitering, your depth, etc. A very common way of selecting a cylinder cap in Maya is just selecting the whole thing and then deselecting what we don't need. And in this case, that works just fine, but sometimes we have a more complex selection and it's a little trickier to just like do this. So instead we have something called select by angle and you can find it here in your modeling toolkit under selection constraints. But I have it set to a hotkey. So when I press Alt A, it turns on select by angle and then I can just very easily select things like cylinder caps for instance. Here's a good example. So I have this shape right here and it's a little tricky to select all of those faces and then try to deselect everything that was at the back. So it's just a lot easier to turn on select by angle, click on it and then turn it off. And then we can just do whatever we want with that. So I'm just going to use the same mesh as an example. So we selected this and if I wanted to, for instance, add some edge loops, I would use my next hotkey, which is select perimeter. And you can find this one under control right click. There's a tons of options for converting your selection into something else. But the point is to make it faster. So there's way too many options here and all I want is to select the perimeter. So I just press shift S and that converts my selection of faces into the perimeter, uh, into a perimeter of edge loops. So then I can just use maybe the S key, which we already saw is the fast bevel and add some detail like that. So sometimes I have something like this. Let me just extrude this. And I want to add some edge loops to the faces around this area, you know, to make it look sharper because right now it's really soft. So what I'll do is I'll press shift up and that selects the adjacent components. And there, it's very easy to just press Shift C, which is a connect tool, and then add some loops. And now that detail is a lot sharper. Let's say we want to select these faces right here. So there are too many faces to just do like a paint selection, or we can also do something like this, but that's still going to take forever. So the next thing we can do is select with the marquee tool, but you'll notice how we selected stuff behind it as well. So this is Maya's default behavior. It always selects through, but there's an option right here called camera based selection. And I have some hotkeys that basically toggle in between these options. So if I press the C key, now if I do the same thing, Maya will only select that which was visible to the camera. So if I turn around, you'll see that nothing behind was selected. And if I press Alt C, then it returns to the original behavior of selecting through. So incredibly useful. I use this one all the time. One thing that bothers me about Maya that I think they just haven't fixed till this day is that if I extrude two faces like this and I try to bridge them immediately after extruding, it's going to give me an error. And the only way I have found to get around this error is to either go into object mode, delete history, and then try to bridge again, and then it'll work just fine. Or, remake the selection. So click outside the mesh and then uh, select those faces again. And that's also going to work. So what I did, I just made a little script that automates that process. What it does is it goes into object mode, clears the history, and then bridges for me all in a single hotkey. And I set it to shift B. So that way I never get that 
bridge error right after extruding. Maya's native mirror tool works pretty well, but sometimes I don't want to go into the options here and then manually change the axis. So what I did is I just set up three hotkeys. If I press shift X, shift Z, and then shift Y, we can mirror across each individual axis. Just note that my mirror hotkeys also delete construction history. So just keep that in mind. Oh, and I also set them so that you don't have to go into object mode whenever you want to mirror. So I can be uh, working in component mode, do something, and then just press shift X and you'll see that I'm still in component mode. Let's pretend that I made a really awesome material and I want to assign it to other objects in my scene, but maybe you don't quite remember what it was called and then you search for it in your hypershade, but you have too many of them. So instead, I just made a hotkey where I select the object that I want to copy and where I want to paste it. And I just press Alt M and it's just going to copy paste the material there. And I can do that for multiple objects. So I want to copy this one and I want to paste it here, 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 all over here. And I'll just press Alt M and it's going to paste the copy of that same material. Actually, it's not a copy. It's assigning the exact same material. Normally in Maya, you can only see the wireframe for the object that you have selected, but I set shift W to turn on wireframe unshaded so I can see the wireframe for everything. But sometimes you're in the opposite situation and you don't want to see any wireframes at all. For example, when you're doing sub modeling and you want to see exactly how the mesh is deforming. And in this case, shift W isn't going to help because we still have this object selected. So I have a separate hotkey, which is alt W and that's going to completely disable wireframe mode so we can see our how our mesh is deforming a little bit better. Pressing Shift W or Alt W both are going to bring back our wireframe. Nothing special about this object other than the fact that all of the edges are set to be hard edges. And this is a very quick fix in Maya. Just Shift right click, soft and harden edges, and this option right here will fix that but I do that so often that I just set it to Alt S to do it for me. And another reason for doing it so often is that whenever you use Shift to extrude, you'll notice that the, all of the edges created are automatically set to, hard, to uh, be hard edges as well. So that's why I just select it and press Alt S and I'm done. And on top of that, if you press Alt E, you're going to select only the hard edges, which I can then bevel and then turn chamfer off. And we can very quickly create some control edge loops for our sub D model. And now to the shelf. If you want to create lattice, then you'll select the object, go to the form lattice. And then if you want to change those divisions, you need to go to the channel box and then change them right here or select all these attributes. And that's a little tedious. So instead, I have this little button right here, which automatically connects my middle mouse to my divisions. So it's very easy to just create a lattice, middle mouse, add how many divisions I need, and then we're done. So if you aren't new to Maya, then you'll notice how after a while your outliner seems to be filled with garbage and empty groups and transforms. And I would say that the number one offender for this is combining and separating objects. So if I combine these two, you'll notice how we indeed do get one object here, but we also get these two groups, which are basically referencing our old objects. And if I separate, Notice how this tree just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And most of the time we can fix this by simply deleting the history, but you'll see we actually got some leftovers here. We, we got one group, which we really don't need. So instead, what I like to do is use these two buttons right here. So if I press this, it's gonna combine and this one is gonna separate. And I can do this endlessly and not generate any junk in my outliner. And since we're already here, two more hotkeys I want to show you is if I press uh, Control Shift D, I'm going to duplicate this face right here. 
And if I press Control Shift E, whoops, Control Shift E, there we go. I'm gonna extract that face. And it's the same as these two buttons right here. They don't generate any junk in the outliner. I'm gonna skip most of these buttons on the shelf because I don't use like half of them. But these two are very useful. So if I click on this one, it's gonna select all the angons in my mesh or meshes, however many you selected. And this one is gonna select all of the triangles. But I don't want you to spam these thinking that angons or triangles are bad and you wanna get rid of them. But if you need them, then here they are. And this purple one, it's a different color because what it does is it deselects angons and it deselects triangles and it leaves you only with quads. I don't know if that's useful for someone, but it was useful for me at one point, so that's why I have it. These little buttons right here are just some predefined materials. So this is the default Lambert, and it also deletes any unused materials in your hypershade, so be aware of that. But if I double click it, I'll get a darker Lambert. So this one is just a modified blend. I made it a little extra shiny. Whoops. Okay, one click. And double click, same blend, but a little bit darker. This one is just like a really dark, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's like a blend between a blend and a lamber, and it, I just made it super dark. I like it though. <laughs> and uh, oh yeah, this button right here is gonna add random lamberts to your objects. And they're all coming out very similar because in the code, no wait, edit. There's this color bias right here, which I set it to be mostly red. If you set it to zero, then you're gonna get completely random colors. And if you double click on it, it's gonna do exactly the same thing, except they're gonna be random blends instead of Lamberts. This button right here does the same thing, but with your wireframe. So let me set this to Lambert. So press Shift W, select all my objects, and then click on it. And you'll see we'll get random colors. And I also set the color bias to be blue. That's why they're coming out blue. But if you want to get rid of your random wireframe colors, then just double click on it and that will set them back to uh, their default value. And this final button right here is my favorite. So what you do with it is you select some faces like this. And then if you click on it, it's going to convert that selection into more of a diamond shaped pattern. And if you double click on it, it's gonna do the exact same thing, but it's gonna select the border triangles. So it depends on what you want. I don't want the border triangles, so just one click. And we can then extrude like this and then extrude again. And we get uh, something that looks like this. And we can actually add some edge loops to make these look more like squares. And that is how I created this pattern in the back using this little button right here. So yeah, that was everything. If you're interested in my hotkeys, you can get them for free. There's a link in the description. But even if you're not interested in then I would still suggest maybe you take a look. Maybe you'll find something you can use and discard the rest. I'm totally fine with that. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Okay, bye.